Hello everyone, we have another CMake video for you today. Hopefully you like these videos. If you do like the CMake series, please hit that like button, lets me know, keep making these. And if you like the content in general you see on this channel, please hit subscribe so we can get it out to more people. All right, so let's get into the content. You can see here I have a bit of code already in here and this is very similar. I did tweak it slightly but it's very similar to the code from how to set your output directories. And I'll include a little card on here in one of the corners. I think it goes into this corner so that you can check that out further. Now, the reason I did that was because I'm going to show you how to do post build events and pre build events are very similar. Now, if I build this, you can see that it is automatically putting in my binary file here rather than throwing it in this build directory and I did that for ease of expressing the, how the build events work and let's get into that now. So we're going to do add custom command. We're going to specify our target and our target is uh, well our project and so we're just going to use our project name a little bit more versatile that way. And after that we're going to specify post build. All right. And quite simply, now we include a command. And the command I'm going to do is move. And the reason I am doing this build directory this way is so that it's really easy to see what I'm doing. I am going to move our hello executable the minute it is built into just our root directory here. Now, this is uh, sort of very counterintuitive, actually, because we could do that with everything we're doing here, but I thought this was good. We have a very clear directory structure. And if this does indeed move down here, then it means that we executed this command in the command line after we were done building. So it seemed like a pretty good test. So let's try it once. Let's build it and we can see it did move. Now let's consider another thing working directories. We want to specify our working directory if we want to deal with relative pathing. And the reason for that is, um, or actually if you're dealing with any command line commands that deal with your current working directory, because the working directory it will use by default actually in this build folder. So if I did this without the working directory, this wouldn't work because it would be inside the build folder. It wouldn't find hello or a binary file in here, or sorry, a binary directory in here. So it wouldn't work. But now that I have my working directory set up as the root, I can use these dots to show relative pathing. And if I build it, again, it works. And just to prove it's not a fluke, I'll delete this out of here and run it again. And you can see there it is. So very cool. Now we've talked about post build events. What about pre build events? Well, there technically are two different types of pre build events. There's pre build and pre link, but pre build. Other than using Visual Studio 7 and greater means the same thing as pre link. So if you're using Visual Studio, the Visual Studio proper, not Visual Studio code. So like the normal version of Visual Studio, then you do have pre-build and pre-link. For all the rest of us, because right now I'm on Linux, so I don't have Visual Studio running, um, pre-build and pre-link mean exactly the same thing. So what is the difference? If you are using Visual Studio, pre-build means do this even before doing anything with any dependencies. So let's say we had a bunch of libraries we were using even before building those libraries run my pre build command line command. If you look at pre link, that means all the dependencies get built, then your command is run, then you do your build. Um, and then if you have a post build event, it'll do that, I guess, afterwards. But um, pre link and pre build for basically everyone mean identical. So if you want something to run before a dependency, uh, just do a pre-build before that dependency rather than doing 
uh, the pre-build here. So the way those look too is pre-build looks like this and it is a little annoying that it doesn't turn blue to show you it is a keyword, but uh, whatever, it, a lot of things do turn blue, so I'm not gonna complain. Um, that's what pre-build looks like. And pre-link looks like this. However, I would recommend that if you're not dealing specifically with Visual Studio, that you use pre-build because more people will look at this and know what that means. Pre-link, you're actually probably gonna have to go to the documentation and go, what on earth does this even mean? And then, um, and then you'll know what it means. So I would just recommend using pre-build. So anyway, we've talked about pre-build now. We've talked about post-build, but the elephant in the room is what about if you're on a different operating system? So I'm on Linux and the move command is this. On Windows, it also happens to be this. But let's say we wanted to do something different. Let's say we wanted to, mm, Let's say we wanted to run a git command and we wanted to run, uh, I don't know, git commit and uh, commit everything with a message uh, you just built. So every time we click build, for whatever reason, we want to um, do a git commit in this example. Well, this works on Linux, it would work on a Mac it would work on BSD, but it would not work on Windows because Windows, you need git.exe. So what can you do? Well, this is when you're going to want to specify operating system specifics. So if, and we'll just throw this in here. If we have Win32 running, which actually also is Win64, anyway, uh, if we're running Windows, do this command, and otherwise we're gonna do an else statement, and our else statement will be to run it the normal way, like this. So there you go, that is how you would do that. I guess another way you could do it too is if you just created a variable ahead of time using um, your if statement, then you could specify your variable and it would include the exe for you. So obviously there's always more than one way to do everything, but uh, this is how you would deal with pre-build and post-build events. So I hope you found this video educational and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.